good evening respected seniors dear friends at the onset i congratulate dr vini jagnani and the and his team for a wonderful meeting and as dr nk singh rightly said keeping all practical clinical topics which are of very importance in clinical practice same year with diabetic dyslipidemia i have tried to make it very very simple so that we can be useful in clinical practice so before type 2 diabetes mellitus is clinically diagnosed the risk of a person's having cardiovascular disease is elevated as much as five times that of a person who doesn't have diabetes and why i am saying this is even a pre diabetic has a similar risk of getting cardiovascular disease as a diagnosed case of type 2 diabetes so it is very very important that we start picking up these patients early in the course of disease so coronary artery disease in indians is a phenomenon by itself dyslipidemia is prevalent in patients with type 2 diabetes in whom low levels of hdlc and elevated triglyceride concentrations predominate you will find a lot of patients come with a bunch of reports today in your clinics they don't have anything as far as the complications is concerned but they will say doc sir my azot azpt badha hua hai mera triglycerides cholesterol bahut badha hua hai mera kuch kuch reports mein garbadi hai thoda dekhiye na you know these are the people whom you should try to intensify treatment for prevention of diabetes and prevention of coronary artery disease instead of just telling them uh, giving them a casual advice of being on a diet or an exercise so we need to pick up patients with hypertriglyceridemia evaluate them completely and believe me most of these people have fatty liver or maybe having even nash as well so look even for things like acanthosis of insulin resistance syndrome and that is where you should start treating dyslipidemia something like pre diabetic and in ladies if you are seeing a lady of 20 years old and 24 years old you will find most of these ladies even have polycystic ovarian disease so with this introduction i feel dyslipidemia in a diabetic is a very very prominent prominent problem that is a triad of lipid abnormalities in a, a diabetic i'm basically talking about type 2 diabetics concentration of ldl cholesterol are predominated by small dense form of ldl cholesterol so if you see there is a rise in small dense ldl cholesterol and not the normal ldl cholesterol the normal ldl cholesterol can be normal or below normal in the total ldl cholesterol which i am talking about the small dense ldl particles are more intrinsically atherogenic than the normal larger and more buoyant ldl particles furthermore because of their smaller mass a greater number of ldl particles are contained within the plasma of patients with small dense ldl further increasing atherogenic risk and the triad of lipid abnormalities which we see in diabetics is namely high triglyceride and uh, small dense ldl cholesterol and lower hdl values this is a term uh, as diabetic dyslipidemia among the metabolic abnormalities that commonly accompany diabetes are disturbances in the production and clearance of plasma proteins and uh, more over development of dyslipidemia may be a harbinger for future diabetes this pattern is most frequently seen in type 2 diabetes and is always a treatable risk factor to prevent cvd so this is what i am been talking about again and again that we need to treat them very very intensively less number of patients meet the goals we all know this the cdc and prevention recently uh, reported that 70 to 97% of individuals with diabetes have dyslipidemia so the prevalence is almost 100% and reports from two academic medical centers document only 35% of the patients attending their diabetes clinic were reaching the ldl goal of less than 100 mg per deciliter one thing i can tell you we may be prescribing statins or uh, some treatment for treating dyslipidemia in our diabetic patient but most important thing is how many are uh, actually adherent to the treatment or compliant to the treatment this is very very important most of the patients will tell you doctor sir hum to khali diabetes wala dawa kha rahe hain baki dawa ki to humko zarurat nahi hai humko koi pareshani nahi hai so that preventive uh, aspect uh, for cad is not been addressed by patients 
So it is very, very important. Like in the previous lecture, Nupur was talking about uh, talking to them, explaining to them, educating them. Even for dyslipidemia, we need to give some education to our patients. So how to interpret a lipid profile? You see the atherogenic particles, the non-HDL uh, uh, component uh, is basically uh, triglyceride rich particles like VLDL, VLDLR, or IDL that is intermediate density lipoprotein. And the cholesterol rich is basically LDL cholesterol and the small dense of LDL cholesterol, which is attached to apolipoprotein B. The good, bad, ugly, and deadly are a total cholesterol should be less than 200. Good cholesterol, that is the HDL cholesterol, should be more than 50. HDL1, HDL2, and HDL3. Bad cholesterol, that is the non-HDL cholesterol, should be less than 150. It comprises of LDL, IDL, VLDL, VLDLR, lipoprotein A, and small LDL. That is all should be less than 20. So these are very, very important. And we know that HDL1 and HDL2 are protective. Today's the safer values are total cholesterol should be less than 200, triglycerides should be less than 150, LDL cholesterol should be less than 100, preferably less than 70, HDL cholesterol should be more than 50, and for women more than 55. There are few data where it suggests that the uh, HDL cholesterol should be more than 40 for men and more than 50 for women. Bad cholesterol, the lower the better, good cholesterol, higher the better. Non-HDL cholesterol should be less than 130, maybe in diabetics even less than 100. And the LPA values, the lipoprotein little age should be less than 20. This is basically genetically determined. Atherosclerosis and insulin resistance are hand-to-hand uh, uh, -hand related. They start from insulin resistance, which is associated with hypertension, obesity, hyperinsulinemia, diabetes, hypertriglyceridemia, small dense LDL, low HDL and hypercoagulability. And all these things basically will lead to atherosclerosis. Insulin resistance, uh, the clinical clues are abdominal obesity, high triglyceride and low HDL cholesterol, glucose intolerance, hypertension, atherosclerosis, ethnicity, maybe Indians and Negroid races. And clinically, as I said, they can have acanthosis, they can have uh, uh, hepatomegaly with uh, fatty liver. So these are few uh, clinical clues for insulin resistance. Dyslipidemia in diabetes and insulin resistance syndrome would be elevated total triglyceride, reduce HDL cholesterol, small dense LDL particles, increase in HDL3 and decrease in HDL1 and HDL2. LDL is not usually high and there could be postprandial hyperlipemia. So if you see uh, in uh, dyslipidemia in diabetes and IRS, is an increase in triglyceride, VLDL, LDL, small uh, L, LDL, and FOB, and decrease in HDL and FOA1. So the mechanism of diabetic dyslipidemia is very simple. The insulin resistance basically is responsible for increase in free fatty acids, which when uh, uh, reaches liver is converted into increase in triglyceride and increase in FOB and increase in VLDL. This VLDL basically is uh, triglyceride rich and is supposed to be gets converted to HDL, but because of the increase in VLDL in the presence of cholesterol and enzyme, it is again converted to VLDL. So this is basically responsible for increase in the dyslipidemia. And this uh, in presence of hepatic lipase is, and FOM1 is being excreted via the kidneys. So cholesterol ester again, again, same for the LDL, and the small dense LDL cholesterol are increased because of the increase in triglyceride. So this is a very simple chain of events which happens in diabetic dyslipidemia. Glycemic control alone is hopelessly inadequate. Um, uh, ABC for diabetic dyslipidemia is the management of diabetes is often referred to as ABC of diabetes. A stands for retaining HPA1C of less than 7% or even better than 6.5. B stands for maintaining a blood pressure less than 130 by 80. And C reminds patients and providers of the importance of evaluating and treating cholesterol. Could decrease macrovascular complications in patients with diabetes. Equal efforts must be applied to controlling lipid levels, blood pressure, as well as blood glucose. This is what is the goals in type 2 diabetes. HbA1c less than 6.5. Blood pressure less than 130 by 80. 
LDL cholesterol less than 100, HDL target more than 40 for men and more than 50 for women, triglyceride target of less than 150, body mass index of less than 25, physical activity should be at least five to seven days in, in a week. Now from blood sugar control to blood vessel uh, uh, disease, we need to uh, put all our patients on something like ACE inhibitors, aspirin, statin, BP goal, glycemic control, physical activity, diet and TLC, and smoking cessation. These are also called as modifiable risk factors. And we have very good data from STENO2 studies where they have shown that it's almost a 20 years follow-up study where they have shown that a multifactorial approach in the management of type 2 diabetes can even reduce something like heart failure by 60 to 70 percent. So this is really a you know, big advantage of treating a multifactorial approach in all your type 2 diabetic patients. ACE inhibitors, what do they do? They are antihypertensive, vasoprotective, antithrombotic, and anti-inflammatory. Reduces CV events, reduces atherosclerosis, plug stability is there, reduces renal disease, which is a strong CV risk factors. Even microalbuminuria independently is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. It has been taken care by ACE inhibitors. Metabolically friendly drugs that prevent rise in glucose and prevent diabetes. It is well tolerated with few side effects like dry cough. Treatment of diabetes dyslipidemia is medical nutrition therapy. The total carbohydrates is to be reduced by less than 50% of the calories. So this is very important. When you see a triglyceride which is elevated, you need to reduce the carbohydrates, not the fat content of diet. Maybe just a saturated fat content reduction is recommended by, uh, to less than 7%. Monounsaturated fatty acids and polyunsaturated fatty acids up to 15% of calories. Protein intake to be increased to 25% of the calories. Dietary fiber, more than 20 grams per day. Soya protein or fenugreek can be given. Vegetable nuts and fruits must be given every day. Most of the vegetarians cannot consume good amount of protein. So there are now a lot of protein uh, supplements which are available along with dietary fibers which can be added to our patients. Now, what is the priorities for treatment? If all lipid values are normal, lifestyle intervention plays the important thing along with physical activity, weight, and waste reduction. Starting in a minimum dose of 10 milligrams once daily is recommended. We know the classical CARD study, which has very interesting data. Follow up every one year by full lipid profile. All Indians must be tested for lipoprotein A, and if more than 30 milligrams per deciliter uh, percent, niacin SR350 to 400 milligram can be started. We have a lot of data with this. Other priorities for treatments are LDL lowering cholesterol, lifestyle interventions, startings with or without uh, azetamide can be given. Second choice could be niacin and fibrates, but we don't use uh, starting along with niacin and fibrates because of side effects. Add-on can be bioelastic binding resins. But today, with a combination of statin and acetamide, we get a very good uh, reduction of uh, LDL cholesterol. Priorities for treatment if you are actually targeting HDL cholesterol, raising the second priority. Lifestyle intervention and exercise is very, very good. We have few data with niacin, but now niacin is no more preferable because the data we suggested, if we don't have much benefits with this. Sometimes fibrates can be used. Triglyceride lowering therapy, first choice is lifestyle intervention. Glycemic control is the best treatment to reduce triglyceride and at the same time, reduce insulin resistance. Fibrates, niacin, high doses of statin if LDL is also high. In case of severe hypertriglyceridemia, that is more than 1,000, or severe fat restriction, that is less than 10% of calories, in addition to pharmacological therapy, it's necessary to reduce the risk of pancreatitis and lipemia effect. You can use combined drugs like glycemic control plus statin. Sometimes you can switch over your patients to insulin. Uh, even that helps in reducing triglyceride. Glycemic control plus statin plus fibrate. You have to monitor enzymes like CPKMD, uh, uh, C-reactive proteins, virtually look for myopathies. And glycemic control plus statin plus niacin sometimes can be used. These are the drugs which has benefits on uh, different lipid components. Lozovastatin, 
ethylvastatin, silvastatin, lovastatin, plavastatin, and serivastatin. Fibric acid, we most commonly use phenofibrate and even gem fibrosil is available. Niacin is also available, but we hardly use anymore. So treatment to, of increased LDL, high LDL, therapeutic lifestyle, drug therapy, therapy of choice is statin. You can add azetamide. If you have low HDL, you can add drug like niacin or even phenofibrate. And for high TG, we actually use fibrates in most of our patients. Anti-diabetic drugs and lipids, you see met, uh, metformin has some uh, benefits of LDL reduction and triglyceride reduction. Pyometazone is favorable as far as triglyceride reduction is concerned and HDL cholesterol is concerned. Sulfonylurea is also favorable as far as LDL uh, cholesterol and HDL cholesterol is concerned. Insulin is not atherogenic at all. It in fact reduces cholesterol. And we know that in type 1 diabetic patients, who have diabetic ketoacidosis, you will find chylomicronemia. But as you start insulin therapy, the lipids get corrected. Uh, Antihypertensive therapies, acinobutters and ARVs are good. CCBs is neutral. Diuretics are unfavorable. Beta blockers may be also unfavorable. And alpha uh, blockers mild, mildly unfavorable. Newer molecules which are there is sarabritazer, which we are using as a, is the first glitazer to be approved and we are uh, getting good results. Lipagine has a predominant affinity to PPR gamma alpha isoform and moderate affinity to PPR gamma isoform or PPR gamma nuclear receptor family. To retaliate, glycemic control alone is not adequate uh, at all. CAD must be prevented at all costs. The ABC of diabetes must be addressed. Starting in full dose, sometimes even fibrate or niacin. All two type 2 diabetic patients must receive drugs advice and ACE inhibitors, ARBs, uh, aspirin, statin should be addressed in all your patients. So I thank you all for your patient listening. I haven't talked about things like familial hypercholesterolemia or things like PCSK9 inhibitors, which is uh, 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 not so uh, related to as a diabetic dyslipidemia. They're just uh, other components of familial hypercholesterolemia. Thank you very much.